Hi, and welcome to my channel. Now, today's video, I'm going to do a little bit of recap, and I thought I'd recap another pair of speakers. These are the Wolfdale Diamond Free speakers. I've had these quite a while now on the channel. I do recommend these for anyone that's looking for a small set of bookshelf speakers. Not going to cost too much money, you're still going to get a decent sound out of it. So, this is a pair I definitely recommend. So, like I say, you know, to me, these sound pretty good as they are, but I'm going to recap them just to see if I can hear any differences and report back to you the differences. What's going to do a sound test? I'll do that another day, I think, because this room's a bit echoey. The rooms I'm using at the moment are a bit echoey, so the room's going to play a big part in it. I don't think it's really going to come across maybe as good as it would if I do it at a different stage. So I will do that at some stage, look after that maybe. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to recap these, so you're going to see me take these apart, uh, do the recapping, and change one of the resistors as well. I'm just going to swap it out for exactly the same resistor, basically. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, take these apart, get them on the bench and take them apart. Okay, so there's the speaker on the bench, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take the tweeter out first, and there's the tweeter, I've turned it over, I'm going to mark up the wire colour in there uh, on the back of the magnet so I don't get mixed up, you know, something you may want to do if you're doing something similar, and the same with the base, I'm going to mark up the base there, uh, the two coloured wires, red and black. Now there's the crossover, so uh, we can see that inside once the speakers have been taken out, and we can undo them two nuts there to get the crossover out, and that crossover will just pull out. Uh, once you've undone that, you can see that uh, it's still going to leave behind inside the cabinet two more nuts uh, inside. So we're going to take them two nuts out as well, and we're going to give all the, the nuts uh, a nice uh, cleaning in there. We're going to clean all the nuts completely. And uh, I'm going to mark the crossover there. You see I've marked it there. I marked where the 450 microfarad capacitor is, where the 6 microfarad capacitor is where the 2.2 microfarad capacity is, and obviously the resistor is only one resistor, so I'm not going to get mixed up there. But uh, also on that board, you're going to see that I've put a positive and negative on there. Hopefully that's uh, clear enough to see there. Uh, I'll come back to that a bit later on, uh, just to show you the reason, or tell you the reason why I've done that. And uh, that's it. So that's the uh, unit completely out, the crossover unit, shall I say, completely out the speaker. Okay, so that's the crossover out the unit, and like I say, take them nuts out, give them a good clean, Bit of emery paper, something like that, so all nice and shiny. So when we come to put them back, they're all going to make a really, really good contact. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture there of the capacitors I'll be using. A uh, bit misfortunate here, I couldn't get all Mundolf ones, uh, the 2.2 uh, microfarad Mundolf, I just couldn't get it anywhere. Well, I could, I tell you, like, I could get it from one place, uh, but they wanted something like £16 postage, uh, and I weren't willing to pay that. So I've gone with uh, another make capacitor, which is supposed to be pretty good anyway, when bits and pieces have been reading about it. Uh, made in Germany again, the same as the Mondolf, they're made in Germany. And this make here, if I put a little uh, picture of it up on the screen, this is Elko Ranch, something like that. I don't know how it's actually pronounced, but there's a little picture of it there on the screen. So that's the capacitor I'm going to be using for the 2.2. Other than that, the 6 microfarad is a Mondolf 6 microfarad capacitor in replacement. And the 450 microfarad here, if I get it here, this big cap here, I couldn't get a Mondol 450. The nearest I could get was a 470. So it's 20 microfarad difference. But uh, with my little meter, I did actually measure them, and uh, I'm not too sure how accurate my meter is with these bipolar capacitors. But uh, this 450 actually measured, I think one measured 464 and one measured 462 microfarad. So they've got a tolerance, these blue ones, of about 10%, I think. Um, so yeah, that was about 460. And the actual... Um, one I put in there was a 470 Mondolf uh, with a tolerance of 5% and that measured 469 and I think the other one was about 469.4 so they was pretty close, they was really close to each other and they weren't a million miles away from what, sorry about that, they weren't a million miles away from what these are. Right, I did mention that uh, I marked that ball positive and negative as well, that's where the uh, wires from the terminals come in, this is, this is red so it's positive, the black is negative, the blue is negative and the yellow is positive and the reason i've done that is uh, to put the new caps in there um i just put them in the right way i think they should go kind of thing uh because even though these are bipolar they haven't got a positive or negative on there um just something that i've kind of picked up uh over my time doing the channel and everything and whatever and it's really for high frequency circuits nothing to do with low frequencies but i thought it'd be good just to maybe mention it in this video and put my capacitors in this way even though they're bipolar and really like i say this is really for high frequency circuits where it would make a big difference uh, but not so much in here maybe um you know maybe rf kind of thing radio frequencies rather than audio frequencies but uh these capacitors um 
are made up of two files wound against each other with some liquid or whatever they use in between. Uh, I haven't got a clue really what's inside. I should have researched that really. But anyway, they're wrapped up two pieces of foil on top of each other. So if I can kind of imagine my hand being one foil here, there's the other foil there, a little layer, little gap, very small gap in between, and they're kind of wound around a cylinder. And uh, at the end here, you're going to have the one that's kind of starting in the middle. Uh, so if you can imagine towards the end, this is the end part, and they're kind of wrapped around here. So this one part is actually going to be the bit underneath the outer. So the outer is going to be kind of like, like a shielding to a certain extent, shall we say. It's going to be a shielding that inner one all the way around. So one part of this capacitor, if I just show you a picture of this Mondov, it's a little bit like a battery really. One end is completely silver and we're going to call this the negative. This is like the shield, this is the bit of the outer layer. So if you can imagine this, this is the end of the Mondolf one with the silver there. So you can see it's actually connected to the outer there. So that we're going to call the negative, even though it's not a negative on this capacitor. And the other end, just show you that Mondolf, looks a bit like a battery really, a little bit like a maybe a C cell battery where that's a little cap on the top. That would kind of be the positive. So that would be uh, the bit that's in, inside that shield in uh, be this part here and this would be the negative. Uh, like I say, it doesn't really matter in this audio circuit, but it's just the way, uh, especially like I say in RF circuits, where if you come to wire that, uh, it's always best to put that negative, that shielding on towards the negative side, even though it's bipolar. Uh, even maybe you've got a different kind of, just a, a wound cap kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, maybe best to do it that way. So that's what I've did in this circuit. I've actually wired up the outer case into the negative and the positive. Uh, is to be the inner casing to the positive side. So I've kind of wired it up that way around, even though, like I say, it's a bipolar, it doesn't matter which way around you put them. Just something I thought I mentioned, you may like to say, come with we've got an high frequency circuit and it's not quite acting as it should do. It may be just you've got a capacitor in the wrong way around that can go in any way around, but you've actually put it in the wrong way around. Uh, it's just something to bear in mind, maybe, on a few, something future or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, so that's how I wired them in there. So uh, you're gonna just see me, I think, put one of them in there. I think I'm gonna just a little clip of this video for the, I haven't got a video, I haven't got a video, I can't remember now what, what part of the video came out and what didn't. But you may be well see me now uh, soldering in the new capacitor in now. So once we've got them all in now, we're going to put it back, like so all the nuts have been nice and cleaned and everything, we're going to put it back into the uh, cabinet itself. We're going to do the nuts up nice and tight. We're going to wire back into the speakers, we're going to put the uh, little clips here on the speakers. And these little clips here, uh, once you pull them off, See how tight they go back on the speaker, spade on the speaker, the speaker connection. If they're a little bit loose, you can get a pair of pliers and you can just push them, but be very careful because you can go really easy to push these down too far and you can't get it back on that clip. And when you come to put them back out again, they actually snap off sometimes. So be a bit careful. But uh, if they find that ain't getting on that clip properly, you may just want to clamp that in. And some people actually take these off. I haven't done it yet. Some people actually take these off and solder these directly on to the speaker, that, that's entirely up to you. And also some people, I haven't done it in this case, some people have actually replaced that wire. I mean, this is quite a, a reasonably thick wire in this uh, uh, crossover, on this crossover, should I say. Uh, but uh, you could quite easily take that off and put your own wire in on there if you wanted to. You could make it a tad shorter, you could get it to the exact length kind of thing, or just a thicker wire. And the only thing with that, you may have a bit of trouble poking the wire through that very, very small hole. So you may just want to come and put the wire on the other side the circuit board but it's up to you but I haven't gone that far but some people change the interconnection cables as well but like I say I haven't gone that far with these particular speakers so that's it they're back in there now so now I'm going to give them a little list uh, how did these actually sound now I'll give them about 15 hours thereabouts I thought I let some people saying you've got to run these uh, crossovers in I don't know how true that is you make your own mind up with that but uh, I did run them in for about 15 hours and uh, they made them sound better after some more hours, but uh, I'll give them a fair bashing at 15 hours. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice about this is the top end. As it's kind of extended that top end. Um, even though these were quite nice, like I say, these sounded nice before I even done all this, and I was quite happy with the sound of these speakers. It just extended that top end, just gives it more top end, um, just like I say, extended that top end. And, and I think it's kind of just put a little bit of, little bit of a curvature towards the top end as well. So where maybe, you know, if you could get the frequency response was flat, say on these speakers, we start off there. It just, it just curved up a little bit towards the top end. So it's, it's more detail in that top end. This is the thing that really, really noticed, I think, is the top end of these speakers. They sounded clearer. And like it's just it's just an extension. I've started doing things that I really didn't hear before. It's just coming out a little bit clearer, a bit more 
uh, detail or a bit more detail to it and um, where we're going to get this splash of maybe a symbol or something like that something on the top end where that even though it sounded nice before you got that tss, and it kind of went tss before it, it, it just extended further this time just even went further into the distance there that tss, just kept on going just kept on going so that was the uh, you know that was the top end was the most apparent here is that there's more clarity to that top end there's more detail to that top end not a vast amount but it was there it was it was, it was clear enough to hear obviously when you when you do these speakers you set it up and you listen to them for a while where they've not been recapped and you come to listen to them again you, you're trying to figure out what's actually happened but it was, it was apparent it was that apparent that uh, that top end has been extended and carried on a little bit more now i would say that it's kind of added a bit more brightness to these speakers so uh, it hasn't overdone it i think it just went a little bit further it would have overdone it would have been a bit too bright i think you know what i mean but it's just about got it right i think on the brightness so um yeah i, I wouldn't have wanted it anymore let's put it that way it's kind of just extended that top end just bright enough a little bit more would have been too much i think so that was okay um and it did with the, the mids and the vocals and that it kind of just pushed them a little bit more forward a bit more apparent they were as well the mids and vocals not by a vast amount but I just add a little bit more to them, a little bit more to them, a little bit more in the room. The sound stage, let's just get the boat before I go on the sound stage. So the bass, I don't think it really affected that. It didn't, it didn't add any more bass to these speakers. It may have been, it, it, it's not a lot in it. It may have been a tad clearer, it may have been a tad, a bit more tad, tad detail maybe. Nowhere near as apparent as like I say, the top end and the mids just being, uh, the vocals and the mids just being a bit more apparent, a little bit more put, you know, in, in the room kind of thing, a bit more there. Uh, with the mids and vocals, uh, the sound stage here, the sound stage it made these speakers sound bigger in the room. It, it just gave them more a more bigger sound stage. It's more if you went to a bigger venue, you kind of went to a, I don't know, say you went down the on all uh, say a, a concert or something to listen to a performer. It's just made that concert all just a bit more bigger. Made that concert all a bit more bigger, a bit more space in there, a bit more bigger that concert all. So that was there. Um, it also gave it. When I say it, it, it made it bigger, it made it bigger, wider, made it wider. So you get, you know, the, the sound come from more from outside the speakers. Just push that sound stage wider. Everything was still focused. Everything was in its place where it should be and everything. But it just gives it a bit more depth. Not so much forward, even though, you know, these speakers um, are quite airy. They're quite airy anyway. It kind of just gives it a little bit more depth towards going back from the sound stage. So, uh, you know, things sounded just a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And like I say, it still had that air, and still that you know things were still in the room in front of you. But uh, listening to a few recordings that I listened to, things were coming from a little bit further back as well. Just giving it, just pushing it out a little bit that way, and pulling it out this way kind of thing. So that's how it affected the sound stage, and that was quite apparent as well. So all in all, let's just make this. We could get more of a live sound as well. Um, these weren't vast amounts, but it was there. You know what I mean? It was there. Um, just make sure a little bit forward more by that. Let's just make sure, yeah. So that's it, really. Yeah, so all in all, um, I'm pretty pleased the way they come out. There was worth doing, I think, definitely. Just for that, like I say, that top end was the most apparent, was the top end, I think. You know, if you're going to take anything out of this, the top end was more apparent, it was more clearer. Everything sounded a little bit more detailed to it. Not by a fast amount, but it was a little bit more detailed to it. The sound stage was bigger, get a bigger sound from these small speakers, get a big sound from these small speakers, uh, bigger sound stage and more depth to that sound stage uh, and everything else sounded really nice as they did before i'd done the recapping so um there you go i, um, I was hoping to add a little bit uh, some people say this has got plenty of bass i'm just a little bit i think it's just a little bit lacking for me maybe maybe a little bit lacking for me the bass even though i've had them three inches away from the wall had, you know people give me plenty of comments where i put these speakers and etc just find me a little they're only small units a little tad bass shy i didn't really add anything to that at all maybe a tad clearer maybe you know it's, it's it's hard to say really it weren't a lot in it let's put it that way but uh, like i say the, the main thing was the top end really should out and that little bit more forward of the vocal so all in all these sound really nice now they do they do sound really really nice but as it is uh yeah the, the, these are definitely worth doing and i def you know definitely recommend that uh, you do that because you're going to get like i say that bigger sound and it's just a, it is a, a, a different experience it is a different experience that's for certain but I, like i say i'm lucky as well here that uh, i've got a spare uh set of crossovers here so i can quite easily clip them back in and go back to the original sound very very quickly rather than resolving everything back but uh, i don't think i'll be doing that anytime soon because i'm quite happy the uh, way they sound now to what they did 
And in fact, I've got a little pair of Diamond 2s upstairs in the loft at the moment. Uh, I'm going to dig them out, I think. Uh, I think they've got a pretty similar crossover to the ones here. And I think I'm going to give them a little bit of a, a capacitor uh, recap as well. And hopefully I'm going to get all one dull fist time rather than uh, just having that odd one, which has kind of spoiled the party a little bit for me, maybe. It's just playing in the back of my mind that I've uh, not got all three Mondolfs in there at the moment, but uh, something I'll come back to. Okay, I've rattled on enough. I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.